All right, there's a new book out there focusing on the life of a black suffragette. It's uh, in the Jim Crow South. Mm -hmm. It was written by the main character's real-life granddaughter, Adele Logan Alexander, a New York historian who traced her ancestors' participation in some pretty pivotal historic moments. Dan Bowen explains the remarkable family tree that came to life. I also like to tell the larger story, questions, the important questions about American history about race and gender and power. Historian and author Adele Logan Alexander has dedicated her career to answering questions at the heart of American identity. I try to do it in the context of telling a family story because that's what grabs people in the first place. And sometimes it means looking to her own family for inspiration. She's sort of an inspiration to me and she's also always been sort of a mystery. It's her grandmother, Adela Hunt Logan, the focus of her new novel, Princess of the Hither Isles. Her presence was always around during my childhood. Adela Hunt Logan taught at Alabama's Tuskegee Institute in the late 1800s, the historically black university founded by famed educator Booker T. Washington. She was a close friend and next door neighbor to Booker T. Washington. She was an advisor. She read his speeches. She kept a social circle, including iconic African-American scientist George Washington Carver. She wrote recipes, she did experiments with food with, with George Washington Carver. Bringing her in touch with the likes of civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois and abolitionist Frederick Douglass. Most people don't even know that Frederick Douglass went to, to Tuskegee Institute, but he did. Even former president Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt was a great supporter of Tuskegee Institute, served on their board of directors. And women's rights activist Susan B. Anthony. Whom she met through the, uh, through the suffrage movement, with whom she had a, a very mixed relationship, complex relationship. Adela was an unsung heroine of the women's suffrage movement, especially for black women. She was uh, a woman who w was racially identified as being black, but she was a woman who looked absolutely white. So she was able to have access to segregated meetings and things like that without uh, revealing her identity, places she couldn't go otherwise. It's the concept of passing, a person of mixed race who can walk both sides of the racial divide. The main thing it gave her was access. Uh, access to people that were important, to places that were important. Extremely dangerous at a time when blacks were being killed for speaking out in the Jim Crow South. She took the information that she that she gained from from those um, from those meetings and the materials that she gained and the people that she knew, and she brought them back to her friends and colleagues. Racial and cultural struggles relevant today. Always very much a, uh, a factor in American life and important because our racial identities are so much more complicated than, uh, than many people think. And important, but just one chapter in Alexander's family history. Her father was jazz legend Duke Ellington's doctor. Her grandfather was a free black man who came from England to fight in the Civil War, highlighted in another of her books, Homelands and Waterways. Someone is trying to make music somewhere. Her daughter Elizabeth is an accomplished poet who spoke at the first inauguration of former President Barack. Obama. We encounter each other in words, words spiny or smooth, whispered or declaimed, words to consider, reconsider. Her son Mark Alexander is dean of Villanova University's law school, and her husband Clifford was the first black secretary of the army and special assistant to former President Lyndon Johnson, who helped with the negotiations of the historic civil rights and voting rights acts. I think that always in my my family there has been, uh, and in, in my husband's family, there has been an expectation that one does one's damnedest to be successful, hard, hard working, having imagination, having ambition. Success is not guaranteed in any, in any case. 
but uh, we do keep trying and trying to give back. Oh, they certainly do give back. I know Cliff and, and Adele. Cliff and my dad were very close. And in fact, Clifford taught me how to snorkel in St. Croix when That's I was so about funny. eight years old, long, you know, a long time ago. But they themselves are such accomplished people. Very interesting story. Amazing, amazing.